Hey everyone, uh, it's a really croaky Christian. I hope you're all doing really well. Uh, I've got some really talented friends. I saw a Facebook clip of one of my friends, Tom Reed, leading worship two nights ago in Edinburgh, and he had a really, really gorgeous tone on his acoustic guitar. Uh, I messaged Tom and it turned out he was using this uh, liquid ambience pedal from Flux Effects. Um, you can see the details on the pedal here on the website. Uh, really impressed by the polyphonic sounds and also the, the reverb and the tones that were coming off of it. That, but because of the way that I have my setup, I don't have pedals at my feet. I'm wireless back to a rig that's uh, side of stage. So I reached out to another talented friend of mine, a pro music producer called Mouthman, and I sent him uh, the link of Tom playing and also some of the YouTube clips. And I challenged him to duplicate this only using software. Uh, the first variation came back really, really close using some Wave plugins and also using some stuff in Ableton. But the one you're about to hear now, uh, the second variation, is natively Ableton. So everything you're hearing is within the stock sounds and created uh, with the plugins available within Ableton Live. Um, some really deep editing has gone on, um, some brilliant stuff. I'm going to hand over to Mouthman. He's going to demo this for you now. Um, and I'm just really interested in your feedback uh, as to what you think, no doubt uh, this and other creations from him will be available for purchase soon. But also I wanted you to see how powerful Ableton Live is for creating some amazing textures just using the stuff that stocks. And I think it's very fashionable to use plugins and very fashionable to go after adding bits into your sound. But there's a huge amount we can do just within Ableton Live. So enjoy this uh, and let me know your feedback. Cheers. Hi, Mouthman here. I just wanted to give you a quick overview of the latest thing I've been working on in Ableton, uh, the latest audio effect rack, which is a, a, a sort of a drone generator, ambient soundscape generator for, for, any, for any piece of audio. Um, I will be doing the demonstration on guitar. I think it actually only really works on, the, on an acoustic and electric guitar. You might be able to get away with it on some higher notes on the bass. I, I mean, keyboard, there's not really much point, so <clears throat> you could try it with vocals as well, but... For now, uh, we'll just stick with the guitar and you guys can have a play around with it as you want to. But yeah, like I said, it's just a drone generator. Um, I'll go through some of these features down here, uh, which, I mean, the majority of them are pretty self-explanatory, but let me just give you a uh, a preview of what it sounds like first. But just before I go on, um, this is only supported by Mac OS X at the moment, just due to the fact that Ableton doesn't seem to have um, a, a pitch shifter built in, so... Uh, I've had to use the audio unit that is shipped with every Mac. So if you're running Ableton on Mac, you will be able to run this. Um, that's all good. But there's nothing for Windows at the moment until I find a solution for that. Um, so yeah, let's have a listen to what it sounds like. Just totally dry without anything on first. Just pretty nasty DI guitar straight in. <clears throat> so... you get the general idea. Um, I'll run through a couple of these features just to show you what's going on. I don't know if you could work out what was happening there, but I was strumming the chord first, then turning up this control knob here, which is labeled as expression <clears throat> and freeze. Um, it's labeled that because I think the best way to control this realistically is with an external uh, expression pedal uh, MIDI controller hooked up to your computer. That way you can just uh, use just use your 
use your expression pedal to fade the chord in after you've played it. I mean, I'll show you what it sounds like. You still can use it if it's completely full, but it just tends to be a little bit too bitey and grating if you um, if you just play a chord straight in. I'll just show you quickly. I mean, you know, don't get me wrong. It's still a great sound, but I just I think for the for the more subtle moments in uh, in worship sessions and parts like that where you just need to have a, a long pad that you're in control of as the leader, uh, I think you're better off just sort of strumming the chord and then introducing it with the expression pedal or just you know just a controller on a keyboard. Anything that's MIDI assignable, you should be okay. Uh, octave mix is pretty straightforward. You know, that's just the the mix of the higher octaves. Let me just give you an example of what it sounds like without it. I mean, you know, that's, this octave mix is really where the magic sort of happens. I mean, even just sort of a, a low dial in, you can get a lot of nice things coming from it. But yeah, it really tings when it's full blast. Etc. Etc. Now you can hear as the drone dies off there. That that's a, that's a mix of some delays and some, you know, a really long reverb decay um, of which you have control here for the mix and decay. I was thinking of putting a control in for the delays as well. I mean, you guys who know what you're doing. I mean, obviously, you know, you can do that yourself. But I just too much control sometimes can be dangerous. You know, it's it, this is what it is, and you're better off just trying to make the most of the few control knobs that are there. In my opinion, anyway. There's a low pass filter there, which is just to really take some of the harshness off because you know those those really those high octaves really do sort of bite through a bit too much and it's great for maybe when you're starting to build um let me just show you You know, actually, then that didn't sound too bad, just completely open. But, you know, there's there's different variables. I mean, acoustic guitars with their preamps inside are going to be a bit brighter, so you might want to tone down the low-pass filter a little bit. But, you know, you can get creative with this as well once it's lowered down. I mean, I don't want to try and tell you what to do, but, you know, you can... You know, you're going to get the richer sort of lower pads coming through that way. Dry wet is exactly as it suggests, you know, it's... It's just total bypass and um, the drone coming through in the background. I mean, the, the only real use for that is if is if the drone is a little bit too washy and you want to dial some of the note in. It's the only real use I've found for it myself, but you never know how, you know, you, you never know what you're going to do with it. So here's an example. See, with the dry, wet mix sort of halfway down, you can cut, you can get away with having the the expression pedal sort of notched at a certain point and you get some really rich sounds like this. Yeah, so there's a there's an overview of it. Uh, I hope you guys can have a lot of fun with it and uh, get really creative. It's a pretty it's a versatile plugin uh, once you scratch beneath the surface. But um, at the same time, you know, it's just a quick and easy way of really peddling those those reflective moments along.
uh, in the worship and in the music. So, yeah, I hope you enjoy it and have fun. <laughs>